People pay big bucks for the fastest PC, so then you would think, conversely, if you buy the slowest components, you should save a ton of money, right? I mean, it sounds logical enough, and this is brand new hardware. It's gotta be better than buying something used, right? Well, not necessarily. Last time around, we used the Athlon 3000G, which by the way, AMD still hasn't replaced, other than to give it a packaging refresh and a shiny new part number just a couple of months ago. Not to be outdone, Intel has come out with something since then that is somehow a bit slower. <laughs> On first glance, the Intel Celeron G5900 is quite similar to AMD's worst. Both are dual core chips based on their respective brands 14 nanometer processors with PCI Express Gen 3, dual channel DDR4 memory, and built-in graphics, but the Celeron is slower. Clocking in at 3.4 gigahertz to the Athlon 3.5 with just one thread per core rather than two, all while drawing almost twice as much power. We're gonna have it linked in the video description in case you wanna see the full specs, but I really don't think any of you should be running out to buy this thing, even if it does include this spiffy heatsink and fan. Maybe you'd rather check out our sponsor. Pulseway, IT systems can be a pain, but with Pulseway's remote monitoring and management software, they're a breeze. Get real-time system monitoring, instant alerts, and auto remediation all from one platform at any time, using any device. Start your free trial today with the link below. We'll pair our little Celeron, or Celery, as we used to call them, with a basic motherboard that we dug out of storage, since the exact board doesn't affect performance much. For this generation, H410 and B460 were the entry-level chipsets, but they'll cost you around 100 Yankee Doodles these days. Notably, this is not a good price when you're spending only $50 on your CPU, which highlights one of the major issues with buying super low tier brand new hardware. The supporting players might end up breaking your budget even if you feel like you're getting a deal on one of the components. That's why we took a completely different approach with our comparable system this time around, oh yes, we're doing one of those as well, by going second hand. The DDR4-2666 supported by our CPU is still readily available, though these days you have to go out of your way if you want to find less than an 8 gig dual channel kit, which we did. So we have gone with this single 4 gig stick of Vengeance LPX DDR4, and for storage we've got this bad boy. It is getting pretty unusual for us to do a build with a conventional hard drive these days, and literally all of the pre-built PCs that we looked at from major retailers ship with SSDs now. But hey, these good old fashioned spinning hunks of metal, they ain't dead yet. So we settled on the WD5000AZ-RZ from Western Digital's Blue lineup. It holds 500 gigabytes of storage, includes a 64 megabyte cache, spins at 5400 revolutions per minute, and has a transfer rate of up to 150 megabytes a second. Yeah, you're gonna be plenty slow for our little sluggish PC here. Ah, isn't that cute? To be honest, guys, we weren't sure how to settle on the slowest case. Is it the heaviest? The one with the worst airflow? The one without any keyed heads on the screws so it takes longer to assemble? Even with the help of a trusty Noctua Edition LTT screwdriver from LTTstore.com? We ended up settling on the Fantex Eclipse G300A, and then we made a cute little snail decal for the side. Now, for some reason, power supply manufacturers don't include a speed rating in their specs. So we went with a basic 450 watt unit from FSP. Nothing to really write home about here, folks, but plenty capable of powering this sluggish setup. It's the Hexa 85 Plus Pro. With the final touch being our eight pin PCI Express auxiliary power, which we are not going to need at all. Believe it or not, you can still get brand new GT 730s, which did work on Windows 11 at one point, but seem to have lost support in recent drivers. So we are gonna be going with the almost as terrible GT 1030. It really is still more of a, I desperately need a second monitor in a low profile case, sort of card as opposed to a gaming device, especially considering AMD's recent launch of onboard graphics that can run circles around it, but let's give it a go. 
That is one slow gaming PC. You can fit so much slow in this bad boy. I think having one RGB thing is worse than having no RGB things. It just looks so out of place. That's the hardest working red LED. Gaming. Hey! <laughs> I actually can't see it on my display. I could see it on the capture machine over there. Now it's on mine. Awesome! Haven't seen Windows take this long to load in a little while. It's, uh... Wow. It's like the gym teacher came in and Microsoft was like, okay, how many laps should I run, coach? And the gym teacher was like, yes. <laughs> Just keep going around. Oh my God, it's still going. It went black for a second. Thought we were done. Do you guys remember the early days of SSD? When people like me were out there going, yeah, SSD, it's a big deal. It makes a big difference. And the hard drive enthusiasts, because yes, that was the thing. <laughs> we're all, mm, the transfer speeds aren't even that much faster. Hard drive, hard drive, hard drive. No, no, this is what I was talking about, man. The CPU ain't helping. Are we gonna leave this whole uninterrupted clip in the video just to show people how long it takes. Okay, there we go. There's the wallpaper. Hold on, where's my password prompt? Look guys, this is not fake, okay? I'm still waiting on it. Hey! I don't know what we were doing for all those other circles, but we're not done yet. Let's run some more. <laughs> my desktop icons are still loading. Google Chrome, what's that? Oh, there it is. Where's my start menu at? <laughs> I right clicked. Let's see how long it takes to register. This is not all hard drive. I've seen hard drive based computers be perfectly acceptable. And this meets Windows 11's minimum specs. This is within Windows 11's minimum spec? Microsoft, did you learn nothing from Vista? Okay, I'm just gonna <laughs> click the start menu. Listen for the delay. Wait for it. <laughs> hey, you resize that, no problem at all. Okay, there we go. <laughs> oh no, Counter-Strike has an update queue during- Oh, come on, what? 160 megabytes. That could take hours. Pause Doom. Yeah, yeah, no, it'll, it'll, it'll do that. It's just, it needs a second to spool down. It's stopping the oh download. Oh my God, it's happened today, yeah. That 150 megs a year. Hey, there we go, baby. I'll fire up frame view, but first, I want to see how fast we can download a game. We are almost certainly CPU bottlenecked right now, and we are looking at 20 megabytes a second. That's atrocious. It's too broken for me to even compare the download speeds to, I was just looking at our chilled Threadripper video and we were downloading at eight gigabit per second. Desktop window manager is pulling 5% of this CPU. <sighs> Windows problem reporting, 4%. We are coming down at between 15 and 20 megabytes per second. So that's in the 200 megabit range. And we are sucking back 40% of this CPU. We're gonna see what's faster, Linus's bladder or Counter-Strike running an install script. My bet's on Linus. The computer wins and Linus is not fast in the bathroom. Did I win? Oh. Never mind, it's launched. What? I mean, is it? Hello? We, could, we could probably call it a draw. It says walking. Wait, uh, close it. Warning graphics drivers out of date. We'll be okay. Don't show again. They're from yesterday, it'll probably be okay. Hello? Is it just broken? <laughs> I do not understand what's happening right now. I think it's fading in. Because the background's getting darker. This is messed up. Okay, 1920 by 1080. Here we go, here we go, that might help. Wow, okay, it's... How is this built out of components you can still buy brand new? Why are companies selling these things? This is Counter-Strike 2. We're not trying to play cyberpunk. I don't even think we'd be able to play Peggle on this thing without leg. I'm waiting for Task Manager to load right now. Task Manager. In summary, we spent $380 dollars? 
It's not even that cheap to build a steaming pile of garbage. For real, guys, this is so slow that it's basically e-waste by modern standards. But we didn't do this because we thought it was a good idea. We did it to illustrate a point, which this far into the video, we are now finally getting to. Thank you for your patience. Our alternative to the slowest PC last time went a little bit off the rails. We suggested a build that cost twice as much. And while obviously I know what we were trying to say, by spending 2x, you could achieve a performance uplift of 3x or 4x or even more. This time, we wanted to challenge ourselves to do better. So we have stuck with the exact same price point of our slowest build, and by turning to the used market, we have gotten a lot more bang for our buck. Facebook Marketplace, unfortunately, didn't have much exciting in our area at the moment, but we hit Pater on Craigslist with this Acer pre-built with an 8th gen Core i5-8400, that is a six core, six thread CPU, eight gigs of DDR4 RAM, a 500 gig SSD, and a fresh install of Windows 11, all for 200 US dollars. Old pre-assembled office machines like this are great for budget gamers because they are known to be compatible and working, and they often come cheaper than the individual parts or even older custom gaming PCs if you see people listing those. So we snapped it up and brought it back to the office to test out. It came with a rather disappointing power supply, just 300 watts and only enough connectors for what was already in the tower. But otherwise, everything looked like a decent enough base with our system and left us with a budget of $180 for a GPU and a new power supply. We were, has anyone got a synonym for pretty darn surprised? We were stupefied to find a used 1080 Ti for just $150 on eBay. What a deal. But unfortunately, that didn't leave us with enough for a decent power supply. So we ended up with a used non-TI 1080 for around $120 and added a brand new Thermaltake Smart 650 watt for $60. Let's fire this up for comparison. Hey, nice. It's even got a speaker for that price. One, two, three, and we're booted. Wow. It's almost like it's a way better computer. There's my task manager. I mean, sure, that's a fair bit of CPU to be using at boot up, but at least Steam is open already. <laughs> wow, what a difference, man. To be clear, this is still an older machine. That was a bit of a delay when I clicked on the system tray for the first time, but this is a market difference. I want to see how fast we can download a game. Get Peggle. Okay, it's not quite the same game. I'm, I'll get F1. So it's still not fast, and we are clearly CPU bottlenecked at that speed. Look at this. This is great. But I was able to open Task Manager. <laughs> at least I was able to identify the problem. The whole interface is so much snappier. Look, what if I wanted to browse the web? There it is. Look how quick this download is done. A whole update is done in the time that it took to just click on it on the last computer. Oh, that was supposed to be a video. Okay. <laughs> Hilarious. Wow, you can change to full screen just like that. It's remarkable. <laughs> Jeez, man, that was brutal, dude. Okay, that's not a ton of FPSs. Those 1% lows in particular, not that great, but I got a kill already. Um, I'll just, oh, oh, hello. Spawn kill! Oh, no, what? Oh. Okay, I'm not getting the highest FPS or anything like that, especially those 1% lows are dipping down to like 70. But this is very, very usable. And I know some people are just plain not interested in used hardware because they have concerns about reliability. They don't like the process of meeting up with people on Craigslist or whatever else. But guys, before you buy something entry level, try and find your Scrapyard war spirit because these experiences are not like when you're choosing a new graphics card for $400 and you might get 72 FPS or 83 FPS. We are talking dramatic differences in the usability of these machines. Oh, what? That was terrible. 
I'd be so much happier with this. Like not even, I mean, look, I do understand that you are giving up a warranty by going this route, but if you test things before you buy them, it's probably not a big deal. If that six year old, eight year old CPU hasn't died already, it's probably not gonna die anytime soon. And realistically, if it does, hey, you've gained some valuable scrapyard boring skills that'll get you back up and running in no time. Going the used route also reduces e-waste, keeping these still serviceable parts in operation instead of in a landfill. And I mean, hey, you get a better machine for your money, just like you'll get more for your money with our sponsor. Opera GX, browsing the World Wide Web doesn't need to be as dry and boring as shredded wheat. Opera GX is a flavor explosion of a web browsing experience. It has a bunch of different mods to make your browser just a little more personal. Things like unique and customizable themes alongside background music, music, and keyboard sounds. This is crazy. Or check out the GX store to see what features and backgrounds others have made. Some browsers can be a major resource drain while you're trying to game. Opera GX lets you adjust how much of your system is being used at any given time, which means you don't have to download more RAM from freeram.com. Not only do they make it easy to port over from your old browser, but Opera GX supports all Google Chrome extensions. I'm learning so much. So get started with Opera GX totally free today by clicking our link in the description below. If you guys enjoyed this video, check out the last time we built a slowest computer. Most of those parts are still available as well. I don't know, you want us to, want us to race them or? I know it's gonna win. <laughs> maybe if we put Windows XP on them, they'll have a chance. Yeah, maybe.